Let's take a look at how you can streamline your Docker development process using make files. Okay, so in recent videos on my channel, we've been focusing a lot on Docker container images and how to publish those to different destinations. But one of the things that can really help streamline your Docker development environment or development environment for pretty much anything you're working on is using Make. Make is a an open source tool that you can use to chain automation commands together to do certain things. If you've ever used something like NPM, if you were live in the JavaScript ecosystem, you can, you can specify commands in package.json to do things like build your project, update your project, you can chain these things together in very interesting ways to make it so this way you have a single like one line command that you run. Well, we're going to do the same thing with make. Now, before you can do this, you'll have to have make installed on your computer. It's pretty much for Linux. You can install it on Windows under certain environments, but you likely if you're using a Windows machine, you're going to want to use uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'll leave instructions in the description below on how to install those. But for if you have them installed, we can start by creating what's called a make file. Makefile, just like a like a Docker file, has no extension at the end of it. It simply is makefile with nothing else there. And the way you would specify a script inside of a makefile is you say you would say the name of the command you want to enter. So in this case, I'll say hello, and then I'm going to put a bash command in here. So we'll say echo hello world, like that. And now what I can do is I can open my terminal and type in make hello. So make is the, the actual binary that's going to be executed. Hello is the name of the command that's defined inside of my make file. And you can see it, it shows you the actual output itself, but it simply outputs hello world. It runs whatever bash is inside of there. So now we can also specify variables within our make files as well. So say for instance, I want to say hello, somebody's name. I can type in a name here and then I'll just put my name in, which is Brian. And then we can swap that out here by using a dollar sign open curly back bracket bracket and then our name variable here. So now when I run make hello, you could see it says hello Brian instead of hello world, right? So earlier I had mentioned that using make you can chain certain commands together, which can can create some pretty cool automations. So let's take a look at how to do this now. I'm going to type in world because we got to stick with the hello world theme. It's kind of like, you know, content creator law, I guess, <laughs> when it comes to programming. And we'll just echo out. This is a chain command. Right. We're just echoing something else out. Now, if I type in make world. You can see it it just runs that command. Now, if I actually want to run something like hello before world, I can simply type in hello as the name of the command that I want to run before world directly after this colon here. So now if I save that and I run make world, you can see it. It now says hello, Brian, as well as this is a chain command. So what's happening is when you run this world command, make is going to look at the commands right after it and run those first. So in this case, it ran the hello command first, and then it ran the world command. So now let's see how we can use this logic to do some pretty interesting and cool stuff when we're working with Docker container images specifically around building. So let's start by creating a build command and we'll just say Docker build and then our and then our tag we've been working with so far is again, since we're publishing up to Docker Hub, Brian MMO2 or your username within Docker Hub forward slash hello Docker Hub and just latest for the version, right? So now if I do something like make build, oh, forgot something here. We got to do a period and then a T. I <laughs> can't just specify the name there. So now if I run make build, we can see I'm actually building the container image and it's already pulled in. It's already pulled in the name. So instead of having to say docker build dot T and then the name of the image itself, I could just run make build every single time and it's going to publish that image out. Now, what happens if we want to specify the, the name of the image and the name of the tag? I can actually create variables up here. So we'll say image is going to be equal to Brian MMO two forward slash hello. Or I'm sorry, forward slash hello Docker hub. And then for our tag name, let's just make that latest like that. And then now what I can do is I can swap these out here. So instead of typing in my entire name, I can just type in image and then colon tag. And this is going to do essentially the same thing. And let's test this out by saying uh, make build or make build. 
Okay, and it did exactly the same thing. If I run up, you could see here's the actual command that it ran. It pulled in the name of the image and then the version number, and we didn't have to manually type that in here either. So again, now if we wanna publish this, here's an interesting one we can do. I can type publish as the name of the command, and then say docker push, and then same thing, just specify image, and then colon tag using those variables above. But we always want to build the latest version of our code. So now we can actually chain the build command in here first. So what's gonna happen is when we run make publish, we're going to first build the container because that is the first command in this series in this series of commands that we're running. And then it's gonna finish off by running the push and publish the latest version of our container up into Docker Hub. So we can see there was the build, and now here's the push that was run right after it was finished building the latest version of our code. Another common one that you might run if you're working within Docker a lot is you can use run and chain the build in there as well. So Docker run, and then we'll say our image name followed by our tag name. And what this is gonna do is every time you say make run, this is gonna build the latest version of the code and then run it just like we got this hello world here. So now if I come in here and type in hello from make file, and save that, I can say make run, and it's gonna build the latest version and then go ahead and run that. So now we have hello from make file instead of hello world. Hopefully by now you have a good understanding on how you can use make files to help improve your Docker development process. If you've ever used make files before, do me a favor and let me know in the comments below what your specific use case was. And if you enjoy this video, you might like my previous video where I show you how to publish Docker images into GitHub container registry. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.